Tank controls became popular in the 1990s thanks to the many horror title gems such as Resident Evil or Silent Hill. Whether it was due to the limitations or a stylistic mechanic choice, these controls became a staple in the game dev world. Thanks to Unity's built-in systems, recreating this type of movement is a breeze. We will be using the new user input system and character controller component in this tutorial. My scene already has a few items like my player named Bino and a rough level created using Pro Builder. I already installed the input system package, which if you want to know more about that process, and the input system in general, feel free to watch my tutorial found in the title card or description below. Create your input system asset and double click it. Make a new action map, then for the first action, rename it to move. This name is important, so remember it. In the action properties, change action type to value and control type to vector 2. This input type will return a X and Y component. Under the action, select where it says no binding. Click the drop down arrow next to path and then select listen. Move the joystick on your gamepad. Select the appropriate option. You can also bind a composite control such as AWSD or arrow keys. Save the asset, then close out of the dialog. Click your player and make sure it has a character controller component and a player input component. The character controller automatically creates a capsule collider so no other collider components are needed. Make sure the collider fits around your game object correctly. The Unity documentation does a great job explaining this component and its pieces if you need more direction on this. Go to the player input component and under the actions select the input system asset you created. The default map should be the first map you created in the input system asset. We want the behavior to be send messages. Notice the gray box under the behavior options. Click off the player object then reselect it. The gray box is now updated and shows our action in this list. It should say on move. Create a new script which I called player controller. Add the namespace unity engine dot input system to gain access to the input system library. Create a vector 2 to store the input values. Remember how the player input component it updated to show on move, create a method with this name. In the parentheses, add the class input value and give it the parameter name value. This is what gets the values from the player input. In the method, set the vector2 variable equal to value dot get less than vector2 greater than parentheses. We need to set up a few variables. Create a character controller and two float variables. The first float will be the player forward and backward speed, while the second float will be the player's rotational speed. Give all three variables a serialized field tag. Create a new method called player movement. In the player movement method, we need to access the character controller and specifically the dot move API. This takes a vector 3 which will move the player the vector's direction and magnitude. Use controller dot move and in the parentheses multiply transform dot forward by player input dot y, player speed, and time delta time. We use transform dot forward since this should always be the player's facing direction. And the y input from the player will determine if the player moves forward or back since the input will be between negative 1 and positive 1. The next step is to rotate the player which will be accomplished via transform.rotate. This function has multiple declarations but we'll be using the rotate around a given axis by x amount of degrees. Use transform.rotate and then fill out the parameters with transform.up as the rotational axis and for the degree parameter multiply the player rotational speed, player input.x, and time.delta time together. That is all that is needed for tank control movement. Call the player movement method in the update method, save the script, and go back to Unity. Attach the script to the player object. In the inspector, make sure to fill out the three fields. I'd set the player speed to 3 and player rotation to 40 to start out. Start the game and test if the controls work. If you have a slope or stairs to test on, you'll notice that the player does not move back down. That is because we did not set up gravity for the character, which I will cover in my next video. If this helped you out, let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe and take care.